Let's review the hardware on the terminal. At the top, we have LED lighting that will come on when the ambient light in the room is not significant enough to illuminate the subject. Then we have two cameras that are inset. Those will provide 3D contouring on the face for better facial recognition. This area is a touchscreen display. Currently it is showing a menu for some uh, standalone programming, but it also will be able to show what the camera sees when folks are using it in the normal axis control mode. Down here we have a colored LED bar. It is currently blue, but it can change to green with, a, with a, an approved access. It'll turn red if there's an alarm condition or something that prevents access. Uh, down here we have a proximity reader, which can be used with key fobs or cards. This is a thermal scanner that will read the surface temperature of the skin by the wrist. It is very accurate and it is not subject to um, more of the ambient changes in temperature outside in the room. Please note that you can also get this with a thermal scanner that's up here for the forehead. Uh, both of them are available. Uh, this one tends to be a little bit more accurate uh, when you're dealing with extremes such as uh, middle of the winter and you're wanting to take temperature inside a vestibule just inside the first door. Uh, it might be better to be scanning wrist temperature than it would be to scanning forehead or temperature. This is an access control lock. This is only used here to demonstrate how we can release a door. In addition to temperature taking, the kiosk has the option to present users with a health screening questionnaire. The customizable questions can have either yes or no answers that help determine if a user is or is not a health risk. Health risks can generate an alert status and all responses are stored with the user temperature scan for later reporting. The terminal has two methods of powering up. The first is a good old conventional power supply that you plug into an electrical outlet. The second would be via a patch cord that you're plugging into a PoE port. If you use the PoE port, of course, that suggests that you have Ethernet and you can use this, with this terminal with a software that will be able to uh, program it, uh, have the access to the live views of it, do some remote control features, etc but you also have the ability to Wi-Fi enable the unit so we can have it connect to the network in either a wired or wireless fashion. It is also capable of being standalone, and if it is standalone, you can have up to 8,000 transactions and also 10,000 users can be stored within the unit. The unit has some additional features I'd like to talk about. The camera up at the top is ONVIF compliant and therefore it can speak to conventional surveillance systems. So if you have an NVR and it's recording other cameras on the property, then this terminal can also be included in that group and start streaming its video for recording into that same NVR. There is also a microphone and speaker built into the unit, so you can have a bi-directional intercom path with both the user standing in front of the terminal and an administrator back at, say, a concierge desk or, or check-in desk. The administrator would have the benefit of actually seeing through the camera as well, so they would have a live view of who's standing in front of the unit, and that bi-directional conversation can allow them to discern whether they should let the door get opened or perhaps they should escort that person in. But in either case, uh, the remote functionality that's provided to the administrator would include the ability to remotely release the door. Uh, the benefit here is that you don't have an administrator subjected to a viral load of everybody coming into the front door and having to hold up a thermometer to their forehead. It's all automated and they can do this all remotely. I'd like to talk about the back of the unit for a moment because this is kind of the business end of things and there are a lot of wires here and it can be intimidating, but it really shouldn't be because this speaks to the flexibility of the system. What we have here are input, output, normally open, normally closed relays that allow us to connect with legacy equipment, locks, mag locks, um, alarms, all kinds of different devices. We also have in here a weakened input and weakened output interface. So that allows us to communicate with access control panels just like we were a conventional reader. And that will take advantage of things because it leverages your investment in the existing access control system. This is a very, very good thing. 
Now let's talk about some of the menu items on the terminal. The first is called basic info. If I touch this, I go in and I can see some of the firmware and other items that are associated with the terminal. I can go to device location, and this will tell me which community it's in, what building it's in, how many units are in the, in the building, and what unit number this is. I can go over to my network settings, and this will let me know if I, or I can change my IP address in here. Uh, so if I want to network with it, I can. I can change passwords in these. I can go to user management, which is to add folks to the face library. So as an example, here I am, and I could add myself to that face library, put in my name and card number and hit save. I can change authentication scenes. So let's go into the authentication scene and look at that in more detail. Inside the authentication scene, we can change the way we screen folks. Here we have temperature measurement only. So if I wanted that to be the case, all I would have is a method of scanning someone's temperature by their wrist, but I'm not concerned about whether there's a person in front of it or uh, whether that person is recognized. I'm simply scanning their wrist temperature. If I change this to face recognition and temperature measurement, what I'm doing is saying, I want to have a face captured along with the temperature measured on their wrist in order for them to gain access. In this last one, it's called face authentication and temperature measurement. And in this case, what we're saying is that we need to recognize that face. We need to know if that's a staff member or an approved guest. And we also want to make sure that their temperature is within range. Down here we have mask detection, which represents whether the person is wearing PPE or not. With that turned on, they are required to have PPE before the door will open. We can turn that off, of course, and now it will allow them through without wearing a mask. The temperature units can be changed from Celsius to Fahrenheit. The range in which we are going to read temperatures can be controlled here and the alarm threshold for the high temperature before we consider it an alarm condition is set here. Right now we're set to 99.1. If someone were to come in with 99.2 temperature, then we of course would put off an alarm condition and this bar would turn red. There would be an audible sound. There would be a trigger at the administrative desk if there was a connection to it and it would be recorded inside the reporting as an alarm condition along with the face. This item allows you to control volume inside the box. So if we wanted to raise the speaker, or lower the speaker, we can do that and then hit save. And device maintenance allows us to do like a manual restart, um, default the configuration, restore all the factory defaults, etc. Now let's go ahead and discuss how it works when we're only taking temperature. I'm going to present my wrist to the side here. It's contactless, right? So non-contact. This bar will turn green if I am within range and this lock will become released if I'm approved. So I'm going to go ahead and present. Normal temperature, please proceed. And the door is now released. Now let's do a scan where we have facial recognition and the temperature testing. So. What you'll notice is that when I present my face in front of the screen, it's going to get a green frame around it. And that's when it recognizes the face. Uh, it'll also ask me to take my temperature over here. And this blue bar, which is currently just blue, will turn green if it recognizes me, or it will turn red if it does not recognize me. This lock will remain locked unless it recognizes me. And if it does recognize me, this will become released. You'll also notice that if it does recognize me, it will put right here in the screen uh, the library image and my profile so that it will uh, let the person know basically that they've been recognized and, uh, and it puts their name on there. So let's go ahead and try that right now. Verification succeeded. Please check normal temperature. Please proceed. Now let's run through an example of taking a temperature scan along with the health screening questionnaire. Verification succeeded. Please measure your temperature. 
Notice that the questions are on screen now and I can touch responses to those. When I hit OK, they will be stored inside the reporting. Normal temperature. Welcome. Please pass. Now let's go ahead and test the unit when we have the mask detection turned on. In other words, we're confirming that someone has to wear PPE. I go ahead and select that from the menu. I hit save. I hit OK and I am now back to my normal screen. Hopefully it didn't catch me. <laughs> and now I'm going to present in front of it and you'll notice that it will not allow me through and it's going to turn red here, even though it recognizes who I am and I am in temperature range. Verification succeeded. Please check it. normal temperature. Please wear Locked. the mask. So now let's go ahead and put on some PPE. Present. Verification succeeded. Temperature. Normal temperature. And you'll notice it released the lock. So the unit is very good at identifying even if someone is wearing a mask. Let's cover all the options for mounting the terminal. You'll notice here we have a desktop unit, and this is very convenient for folks if they just want to put it at a front counter. This is a stand up pedestal, and on this pedestal we have three access points in the back. We have one at the bottom so we can hide all the wiring. We also have another mid-range panel here and then one at the top so we can also hide more wiring and route things down. Um, this is a powder coated unit. It is a separate purchase and it is referred to as a pedestal. And again, this one is referred to as the desktop unit. And there is a third option, which is to mount it on the wall. And there is a wall mount kit for that. Now let's discuss the control software that would be sitting at, say, a concierge desk or a front desk. You can simply click on access control, and you're now looking real time at the actual terminal and what it sees. So I'm waving over to the terminal right now, and it can see me here. Now, I have access to the face library, real time monitoring, access records. Uh, so right now I'm in real, real time monitoring, and you're seeing here the date and time stamp and the last temperature of the person that's scanned. So if I were to present again to this unit, we'll see that. Normal temperature, please proceed. I happen to be the same temperature again, so it didn't change, but I'm still 97.1. Um, and over here, you'll notice that it gave us a real time post of that event. So you can see that right now we're not in face recognition mode. We're only in temperature taking mode. So it went ahead and took my temperature and it wasn't trying to determine if I was a staff member or anything. And it said at this time, this is the temperature and here's the picture of that person that did that. And they're considered unknown because there is no facial recognition. But notice here we have a slide bar. And if I slide back up, I'll get up to where I had it turned on with facial recognition. And you can see that it recognized who I was. It said that I'm PM. That's my, those are my initials. And it said I was not wearing a mask. At that time, I had turned on the PPE requirement, so it would report here. And notice it went red because there was no mask. Now let's cover the software that would be used at an administrator's desk, such as like a check-in desk or a concierge. They would click on access control, and you're gonna see that they now have a real-time view. This is me waving into the camera, and you can see that the last Temperature take is right there on the screen. So whoever passed by at last, that's what their temperature was. So as they're approaching your desk from the distance that they last scanned, you'll be able to see what their temperature was. You also see a date and time stamp here. You also can see that if that person was recognized, it would have given you a matching face over here, would have provided a name, and it would have provided their temperature and the time that they passed by. Currently, this one says unknown. And that's because we're not in the mode of doing face recognition right now. We are only taking temperatures. But if I slide this bar up, you will see some events that took place when I was matching faces. So in this case, it recognized that I am this person. My initials are PM. You can put in John Doe, Susie Q. It said that I was not wearing a mask because at that time I had PPE as a requirement and I was 96.9 .9 degrees Fahrenheit at this particular time. So these are real-time records. 
And I wanna mention one other thing, and that is if this person had never been here before, um, they would look like this, where there is no match in the record. And when you hover your mouse over that person, it will turn into a plus sign. So then right at that moment, you can automatically enroll that person directly into the, uh, into the records. So it's a, it's a very efficient way of doing it real time. So if you have guests that are passing by a front desk or some kind of high volume traffic, you'll click plus sign, you'll get a pop up here, you'll put the person's name in and an ID that you wanna issue to them. And then you save them to either the employee library or the uh, guest library, et cetera. Now let's jump over here to access records. If we click on the records, you can see that we have uh, the ability to filter all of the records that have been happening. So let's look here real quick. You'll notice that we have a date and timestamp, the name of this person, in this case it's PM, uh, the person's ID, if it was an ID card, that would be the ID type that was used, uh, the ID number, were they wearing a mask or not wearing a mask? what was their temperature at the time, and here's the photo that represents them. So this is the library photo as it states up here, and here's the snapshot of them when they showed up. So it is indeed showing that I was wearing a mask. And if we come down a little bit lower, you'll see same person comes by, no mask. So these reports are very easy to work with. You can use status for filtering. You could say, show me all of the um, events that happened when there was no mask. So we were in real time view and now let's go over to access records. You'll notice over here that we have a slide bar at the bottom that allows us to see all this data, but here we have a date and timestamp, the name of the person that presented, in this case it's PM, those are just my initials. Uh, you have a person ID, you have whether it's an ID card or an ID number. Were they wearing a mask or not wearing a mask? In this case, they were not wearing a mask. Their temperature was 96.9. And you can see here that it will register this against a library photo that we have stored for this person. And that's the snapshot that was real time when the temperature was taken. So if we slide down on this, we can go up and down and see all kinds of different folks in here. And you'll notice that there are some staff here that do not have a library photo. That is to say that they have not been added to the library. So if you wanted to enroll this person as a staff member, if you sco scoot all the way out here to the edge, it's just this easy. There's a plus sign right here. You click on that, you put in the name, and you can type in John Doe and you can put in their personal ID. Let's do 2345, ID number 4356. And any remarks, you could say, you know, staff, maintenance, uh, cleaning crew. And when I hit next step, it's gonna ask me which library do you wanna put it into? The employee library, the visitor library, executive staff. Let's say that this is an executive staff person. I hit okay, and they're now enrolled. So the next time this person presents, the door will unlock because they're considered staff and it will recognize them and there'll be a library photo right here. And because that person is now entered into the, into the library, just as I was entered into the library earlier, I no longer would have, I, I don't have a plus sign and they would no longer have a plus sign next to them. So they couldn't be enrolled twice and this saves from any accidental um, duplications. You'll notice that we have some filters here at the top. We can filter based on status, whether someone's wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, their temperature range. You can do a date and time range. So if I selected today as an example, um, it would grab just today, or I can customize these times in here. So let's go ahead and grab all of those um, that are from a particular temperature. Let's say that anyone who was 97 degrees or higher, as an example. We can put in that and go to 98.0 and I hit search. And it's going to pull up the folks that were from 97 to 98 and here are their images. 
Now, because this filtering allows me to uh, get to some reporting that perhaps is more important than others, um, I can export. So if I click on export, this can be now stored as a CSV file, and you could say pass records for this location on this day, and you hit save, and you've exported all of that data. So it's very easy to work with. You can store it on any of your conventional methodologies, you know, network access servers, on a hard drive, put it out in the cloud, um, but very easy to work with. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate some of the real-time controls we have from the live view. This is obviously a live view. I'm in front of the terminal right now. And you can see down by the palm of my hand that my last scan was 97.1 degrees. Now if I move the mouse here down on top of these icons, I have controls. This one says open door. So right now if you hear this clicking sound, that's that lock that is closed that I cannot get through. If I click this, that, that lock is now released. You'll also notice that the next thing over, I have a microphone and I have speaker. So if I click on the microphone and the speaker, speaker. it now has opened up a bi-directional communication path. Apologies for the echo, but uh, proof that it is working. Let's go ahead and turn those off. And you'll notice that we were able to control the interaction with the person at the terminal from a remote location on this particular laptop. So uh, hopefully that explains things, but um, this could be located at the concierge desk, it could be at a front desk, it could be in a back office somewhere. It all will work the same way. Now let's go over to the FACE library and manage those uh, entries. You'll notice here that we have a series of libraries. Right now I'm clicked on the executive staff. And you'll notice I have some folks in here. I can select one of them and delete them if I wanted to. So if someone left the firm, uh, you could at that point just simply delete them and they would no longer have access. Uh, you can import or export. So if these folks were all staff members and maybe I had a whole long list of them, and I had another one of these devices in another location, I can simply import that into the other device. So I don't have to re-enroll everybody at each device. It makes for a nice centralized form of management. Um, I can do the same for visitors. I can do the same for employees. If you notice here on the bottom, it says, please face the camera. This is because it's in face recognition mode. If it were only taking temperature, it would say here, temperature measurement. Notice also we have a space here that's blank. This can be the community logo or some kind of firm logo that customizes this view. We can also have this entire screen be represented as an advertisement. So as folks approach, um, you could have a statement in there like, uh, welcome to our open house or uh, come visit us on the 23rd when we have this event going on. So this area does not have to be just the camera view, it can also be an advertisement. I also wanted to mention that up at the top, we've had 24 people come by, 24 have been normal. Of those 24, three have been employees, one is visitor, and the rest have been unknown folks. The next thing I'd like to show is an alert condition on the administrative console. So you'll notice over here to the right that my mouse is showing that someone presented who was not wearing a mask and was 101.6. I did this prior as well, and you can see I wasn't wearing a mask and I was 101.8. So I'm gonna go ahead and warm my hands up, so don't laugh, I'm rubbing them together to make them real hot. And then I'm gonna present in front of the camera here and we should get an alert. Verification succeeded. Please check temperature. Abnormal temperature. So we get a notification. Let me close that up so it stops looking at me. Uh, we get a notification here that's audible and we get a read. So uh, this is very important because I don't have to be sitting in front of everybody that comes into the front door. 
Instead, I can be back in an in a office, I can be at a concierge desk or a front desk, and I'm alerted with that audible and the pop-up here that someone is um, in an alarm condition. Of course, at the unit itself, what you did not see is the unit turns red and we can make it have a, a, an audible alert as well. So in both cases, um, we can be real time in our notification that uh, there's an alarm condition. Now that we've had some folks that are out of range present in front of the uh, terminal, I wanted to show that the total now is 30 people have been read and 27 of them have been normal. That is because three of them were out of range. I'd like to indicate that we can go into the system via browser and do some settings changes. So here we are inside a browser and I'm in a segment called personalization and I'm here to show you that we can customize the logo. So we simply can put the community's logo on the machine by selecting the browse section here, grabbing that uh, logo and putting it in and it will appear on the front of the terminal. We can also do something called add mode so we can change uh, what the front says and it can advertise, say, an open house or some other kind of event that's going to be happening in the community. I'd also like to mention that we can customize all of the audio prompts. So if you would like to have a male voice or a female voice or some additional comfort messages that say, please proceed to the front desk, um, those kind of things. All of, all of that is customizable and we can do that for your community in particular.